Okay, it's, uh, let's talk about the high street. So there's the influx of charity shops. Then you go into the town or, well, yeah, local town, we'll call it town. Um, some of them look like a ghost, wild west uh, ghost uh, town. But anyway, if you go into the town, you've got a choice of paying council parking to park anywhere or limited time. Or if there is a regional shopping centre, then they're going to charge you for the privilege to park. Um, you're going to go down there, you're going to get charged anywhere between a minimum of 10 and 35% or more of a, a price increase compared to the internet. So you've got the inconvenience of driving there, the fuel cost of driving there, the parking cost of driving there, the inconvenience of getting wet if it rains and you're walking through the high street. Then you've got the, the, the inconvenience of carrying it back and you're paying pr a premium to actually to pick this item up today. Um, one of the things to point out is people whinge about high street prices, they don't actually realise that the retail sector workers are actually on relatively low wages. So you've got landlords that are tearing the arse out of it, business rates from the council that are tearing the arse out of it, the actual shop workers not actually being paid a particularly high salary. Um, so really what's going to have to happen at some point is that the, the funding method is going to have to change because obviously the massive rents we've seen like the likes of Woolworths disappear in the past BHS that were up to its eyeballs in debt that Philip Green uh, carefully ditched and uh, gave it to someone else who uh, to run it who obviously uh, did an absolutely wonderful job of uh, running into the ground with the same kind of uh, care and uh, consideration as the Titanic when it went down so realistically the only way the high street's going to change is if it becomes either a value proposition where the, the prices can match the internet, which obviously there's a load of overheads, so that's not going to happen. Or it needs to have some kind of wow factor or something to draw you. I mean, if you want to go for retail shopping, you're going to go to a big regional shopping centre. They're going to spend, I don't know, 200 million, I think, Cribs Causeway cost in Bristol. I can't remember what Blue Water cost, but it must have been astronomical. So they're going to give you free parking, but you're going to pay top premium prices in in that shopping center the plus side with it is is that it's going to be warm it's going to be dry you're not going to have anyone trying to flog you anything from insurance to personal injury claims to the big issue or anywhere in between so therefore you are paying for the free parking and the the the, the clean dry environment and what have you but you can see what you're getting for your money so you've got a choice of a dirty, wet, manky high street, which you've got to drive to, parking charges, carrying something heavy back, or you can have it dropped down from a major retail off the internet, be it Amazon or AO or Curry's PC World, which interestingly, if you download their app, they will actually do price matches that they claim not to be able to do in store. Um, as I say, I can't see that unless... The, the high street needs to, to become something more... It needs to be inviting, it needs to have the something unique that you can't get by clicking a few buttons on a computer and uh, having it delivered down next day. Um, as I say, I, I can see that Mary Portas and her, uh, her high street uh, review was a total waste of time because until you change it fundamentally, all it's going to be is less choice, more expense, more charity shops.